Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. So Child With My Bite is back and alhamdulillah this time season 3 is going to be available on the podcast app both on Android and Apple devices. So if you're on either of those then click the link below inshallah. Subscribe to the podcast. I promise you you're not going to want to miss it and now it's accessible for you wherever you are. If you're on the train you can listen to it with your headphones in or you've got AirPods, Beats, whatever headphones you have inshallah. You can listen to it wherever you are whenever you are inshallah. And if you're watching on YouTube as always just remember you can watch the video uh, and all the pre Previous episodes from the last two seasons are available on YouTube. If you go to the playlist on Nasiha Session, uh, the YouTube channel, if you go to the playlist, it's called Chai with Mabai. You can find all the previous episodes there. And inshallah, from now on, all the future episodes on the podcast app. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Amma ba'd, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Chai with Mabai <sighs> Today's episode we have uh, Yasin again, Usad Yasin, mashallah he's rejoined us, give salam Assalamu mm, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu We've got the YouTube panel of uh, Sa'ad and Imran, give salam guys Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Today's episode, let's get straight into it, is on the topic of depression um, As I'm guessing you've already read the title of the video uh, So the first question that I want to Put to Ustad Yasin is what is depression and does depression have any basis in Islam? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillah wa salli wa sallim ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'd um, So we do have ayat in the Quran that mention this the subject of being sad, sadness generally Okay, so Allah says in the Quran وَمَنْ, uh, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whoever turns away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he's going to have a a sad life, a dhanka, which is a sad life, you know. And in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the opposite of being sad as the person who's happy, which is in where he says in Surah Al Ra'd, Ala bi dhikri Allahi tatuma innu al qulub. He says that with the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find serenity and peace and calmness, you know. So, yeah, this uh, the topic of being sad, it does have. Uh, a basis in Islam and it's from, and, uh, from amongst them the ayat that mention it is about the shaitan you know Allah says in the Quran وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقِيِّضُ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ He says that the person who turns away from the dhikr of Ar-Rahman the most merciful Allah we're going to make for him a shaitan is going to be a companion for him and as we know that the shaitan from amongst the things that he does to the believers is he tries to make the believers sad you know Allah says in the Quran إِنَّمَا النَّجَوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا uh, the the najwa, which is people be, uh, gathering in secret for bad, for evil, is from shaitan. And the reason why is liyahzun al amanu in order to make the believers sad, so to enter sadness into the hearts of the believers. So yes, sadness, depression, you could call it all of that stuff. It has a basis in Islam, and yeah, it does. But depression is a bit different from just general sadness, right? Like someone might feel sad but not be depressed. Mm. But it, or so like I assume that li- the, 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 the depression. Is as they say is is a type of sadness that generally is with the person twenty four seven, right? It's depression that is always right. With okay, them. I see. Okay, uh-huh. and that is generally. I'm not saying that's the only type of depression, by the way. Yeah. But I'm saying that a person that Allah says in the Quran, we're going to give him a ma'isha and dunka. We're going to give him a sad life. A sad oh, life. Okay. You get it. So that could be interpreted as a type of depression. Obviously, okay. medically, maybe not. Mm. But I'm talking about a type of depression, okay. a type of a constant sadness, as you can say. So, right. Imran, what are some of the causes of depression? Or some of the things that can cause depression? Some of the reasons why someone might become depressed? So, before we mention some of the causes, I think it's important to mention the types of sadness that the uh-huh. Sharia acknowledges. And generally speaking, the types of sadness are three, okay? Okay. There is the sadness with regards to things in the past. Uh-huh. For example, someone... That's what I meant, by the way, when I said... Causes, that's what I was referring to, the three things oh, I think you mentioned. Causes in, as in what caused this to take place. As okay, maybe I could use a better okay. word, yeah. So anyway, the sadness which is due to something that happened in the past, okay, this is what we call grief in English. In the Arabic language, it's called huzn. Then there is sadness with regards to that which is in the future. In English, we call this anxiety. In Arabic, it's called ham. And then we have sadness with regards to the present, what we in English call distress. This and the Sharia refers to this as gham. Okay, so there is huzn in the past, ham in the future, and gham in the present. Does that make sense? Mm. It's okay, cool. So you mentioned that those are the three things, um, yeah. and, it, and it kind of makes sense: the future, the past, the present. Yeah, uh, they're the you know main reasons why people get worried. Yeah. Um, 
and you know in turn get depressed now one thing i want to quickly touch upon is the you know difference between jinn possession and depression just very quickly because uh-huh. you find that there's a lot of people out there like you've got like a wide spectrum on one end you've got people who say that every single thing that happens you know is jinn possession the yeah. person flinches he twitches he moves he you know yawns too loudly or he's, mm-hmm. he's possessed or you know everything that happens he's possessed he's possessed mm-hmm. he's possessed then you've got another group of people who say that no matter what, like it's never jinn possession <laughs> it's always just always got, he's mentally ill you know, he's like mental illness so what are the ways to reconcile between the two and how can you know which one of the two you have and is the cure different depending on which one you have well the way to reconcile is that the Quran and Sunnah affirms that both exist and also both have similar symptoms does that make sense but they also both have the exact same treatment okay the so, treatment is the Quran Allah said so in essence like you don't actually have to know which one it is yeah, you have if you because didn't know, if you didn't know is this depression or is it gin possession the cure is the same the cure is the same so just go towards the cure anyway just go towards the, the so cure. what is that cure? and of course of course once you do the treatment and it starts to become apparent this actually gin possession then then this treatment starts to get a little bit more specific or depression it could become apparent that right and then, depression. and then and but even 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 for like you know mental health kind of treatments here yeah generally speaking don't really treat the illness it just pacifies it through drugs that have symptoms that will affect you in other parts of your life does that make sense yeah. so it's not it's they, I, they don't really have do you know do you know do, and do you know one of the reasons why i find this to be the case what? is because they don't understand the effect in the relationship that the heart plays on your emotions does that make sense mm. for them it's just the brain do you understand it's just a very physical thing okay there's chemicals in the brain that you know the uh what are the chemicals that what's the, what's the love hormone called sorry the happy hormone called again serotonin or no, no. Where, where, you know what i'm saying there's not enough serotonin in his brain let's give him a a, a, a pill it's euphor- no not euphoria it's a uh, never mind this move dopamine so dopamine, dopamine. dopamine that's it dopamine, dopamine. Yeah. that's it so the serotonin dopamine levels are a bit off so what is it they're just playing with chemicals in your brain does that make sense mm. so even then they're never going to really deal with your problem does mm. that make sense yeah um and the only way to deal with these mental, like th- these, 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 uh, these, like these, these kind of problems. Not the only way, but the, the primary way to deal with them is the way that Allah Azza taught you. Allah said, "Allah ya alamu man khalaq." Should I not know that which I created? Allah said, "I created you, and I created a being, a creation." Allah knows this creation gets depressed. For that, Allah He gave them a cure. He gave them a treatment. And the primary treatment is what the Quran, as Allah Azza wa said, "Wa shifaa ma fi sudur." Inside, there is a cure. In the Quran For that which is inside of the chest The pain, the sadness, the distress The anxiety that you feel in your chest The Quran is a cure In, in it is a cure and, th- and that cure is not just for depression It's for magic It's for evil eye It's for jinn possession it, f- it could be for cancer Whatever it might be Does that make sense? Even the ayah he mentioned at the beginning Whoever turns away from my remembrance, remembrance. The Quran is the remembrance of Allah mm. There's no, That's the greatest remembrance of Allah Does that make sense? Mm. In the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find peace. What remembrance? The Quran. Does that make sense? Even the dua in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, which is like the popular dua that Prophet taught us for when a person is going through, uh, uh, you know, anxiety or distress. Uh, sorry, uh, anxiety and and, and 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 grief and sadness, basically. Yeah, uh, it's it's not a long dua, but we'll put it downstairs for everyone. But towards the end, what is the cure that the Prophet taught you to make dua for? What is it that you're asking for which is going to be the treatment for the depression? It's the Quran. And taja'al al-Quran rabi'a qalbi wa nura sadri wa jala'a huzni wa dhahaba hammi. That make the Quran a spring for my heart, okay? Mm. And make it a light for my chest. And it's a very beautiful, uh, it's a very beautiful kind of like subtlety in, 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 in this dua, which I think would be good to just kind of reflect over for a second. You know, a spring is something that you find which is underneath the earth, which is a water source, okay? And it's in remote areas where generally speaking, you might not find water sources available. And that spring, it actually gives life with Allah's permission to the vegetation. It allows for these beautiful flowers and plants to grow. It facilitates it facilitates, it facilitates um, nutrition and minerals for animals and even just, just, just living organisms in that area. Does that make sense? Like It is like the source of life. Does that make sense? Even when you're in a desert, and you're, and, you're, and you're thirsty and suddenly you see a spring inside of the desert like it's, 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 a, it's a very amazing feeling that spring it nourishes you it refreshes you it relaxes you it just kind of brings sweetness and happiness back to you so the Prophet is saying make the Quran 
a spring for my heart because the heart is inside. So in, 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 etern, in, internally, make the Quran like a spring that's just gushing inside of me. Does that make sense? And the Prophet said, And nur, light, is something that emits that which is inside of it into the outside. Does that make sense? And when you have a light bulb, the, what, obviously I don't know the science of it, but whatever is inside of the light bulb, when it shines, the light is, is coming from the inside to the outside. So the Prophet said, make it a, a nur from my, from my chest. And, and the chest is on the outside of the heart. So the heart is inside. Mm. And that which covers the chest is, okay. what covers the heart is the chest. So they make the Quran a spring for me internally. So make my inside just be gushing with the Quran. Like a, like a fresh spring of Quran. And then what happens as a result is that what, what, when, when that's internally, what emits out from me, i.e. on my body, my limbs, my eyes, my tongue, my feet, my, my actions, is going to be the Quran as well. Does that make sense? So the Quran is going to be inside me, and the Quran is going to be outside. I'm just, I'm just going to be gushing with the Quran inside, I'm going to be bursting with the Quran outside. And that's an amazing life. And then with that, what is it? وَجَلَاءَ huzni. Take away my, take away my grief. وَذَهَابَ hammi, And take away my anxiety. Does that make sense? Mm. And that happens through having a relationship with the Quran, living by the Quran, implementing the Quran. Does that make sense? So the Quran is something that is needed as a treatment for this. So you've established that the Quran is the uh, is the um, is the cure. But how does the Quran become the cure? Is it to write it on a piece of paper, tie it to a string, put it around our necks? Is that is that how we do it? Do we just hold it in our hands? Do we? Press it against our heads. Like, how do we make the Quran become the cure? It might sound like a really simple question, but I think a lot of people are not going to know. How does the Quran become the cure? Do I listen to it? Do I do I buy loads of them, put them in my house in different rooms, one in each room? Is that how? How is it that you make the Quran the cure? So the Quran being a cure, um, Allah says in the Quran, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ that the, we, we sent down from the Quran something that is a shifa, a cure, and a, uh, a mercy for the believers. And the way that the Quran was um, a cure in terms of these physical illnesses as well as spiritual illnesses is that to be read, read ruqya. So when a person has, um, for example, an illness, he has a cold, for example, or flu, or he has another type of illness, which is depression or anything, any type of Illness can be cured by the Quran, uh, and that is by reciting it on the person, not by buying it and hanging it on the on ceilings. Because this is something that was disliked by uh, the Ibn Mas'ud radiAllahu anhu, and he disliked that. But generally, it is by reciting it and implementing it as well. Because we know that sins are co- a cause for a sad life, and also sins are a cause for, as Ibn Qayyim mentions, the effects of sins. He has a book called Adda wa Dawa, the illness and the cure for the illness and he mentions in there I think over a hundred benefits or a hundred a hundred, re, uh, hundred harms from sins and from amongst them being a loss of lifespan a loss of happiness uh, an increase of illness a loss of provision so all of that can be cured by reciting the Quran implementing it and staying away from uh, sins but as for the reciting the putting the Quran into, into your for example like the cards you can put it into the cards write it down and things like that that's not necessarily a cure, necessarily. A cure. And reading it like yourself. It. Reading it, or someone reading it on you, and I'm implementing it in your life. But you see, that, that point I really want to focus on is the implementation part, because people think that the qira'a, the recitation of the Qur'an, is just something that you do on your tongue. Like in Allah, as we say in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ آتِيْنَهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَتْلُونَ وَحَقَّ تِلَاوَةِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ That the people to whom the Qur'an was given, they recite it, حَقَّ تِلَاوَةِ They recite it. A true recitation, the way that it deserves to be recited, they are the ones who dis- they were the ones who truly believe in it. Does that make sense? Um, so, the ayah. Can I say something about the ayah? Um, the ayah. It, um, <laughs> he shook. <laughs> <laughs> the ayah. No, no, because I, I interrupted him. The ayah. Um, it has two meanings. They're not going to say anything in the comments when you interrupt me, though, Shaq. No. Oh, you just interrupted him. <laughs> I interrupted him. No, he's interrupted you right now. I need to be just points. Yet no, I just interrupted him. Oh, sorry. Now I just interrupted him. Yet to Yet to know, it means two meanings. What you, recite, what you said is just the re- reading. Yeah. And the other meaning comes, that's from tilawa. That's the master of tilawa. The word comes from tilawa. But the other master it comes from is 
من التلو which means to follow so يتبعونه حق اتباعه that's what it means wow. they follow it in the correct following and this is the correct this is the so more correct means yeah two must like, like the uh, like the question you like uh, yeah, yeah. two different meanings though so yeah two different yeah, yeah, yeah. the same مضارع uh, مضارع wow. the point is that it means يتبعونه they follow the Quran the way it is who, who mentioned this um, all the مفسرون to be but, like in, you, you, but you know yeah. what the powerful yeah. point you know the powerful point there is that even if that wasn't the case mm. The way that the Salaf and the Sahaba understood were from the Salaf understood it is in that way anyway. Yeah. Like for example, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, what does it mean to recite the Quran the way it deserves to be recited, a true recitation? He says that you, the halal that Allah made, you believe it to be halal. And the haram, you implement it as haram. Uh, as in the things that Allah says, stay away from you, stay away from them. And to not do, to not distort the meanings of the, basically to just implement it, basically to act upon mm-hmm. it. Does that make sense? That's why Ibn Rajab al-Hambali rahimahullah ta'ala no, sorry, Sheikh Rasai ibn Taymiyyah, he said there is the, uh, there is the Qira'atul uh, Badan, there is the recitation of the body, and there's Qira'atul Lisan, there's the recitation of the tongue, does that make sense? Some people, they recite just on the tongue, okay, but that doesn't really benefit them, like, I mean, look, there's a video of a, of a kafir guy who learned Arabic and he recites Surah Al-Fatiha online, there's videos of Chinese people that recite Surah Al-Fatiha Online, does that make sense? Non-Muslim Chinese people. So again, you mean non-Muslim Chinese people? Non-Muslim Chinese people. Yeah, they recite uh, Surah Al-Fatiha online. Like, it's not going to have an effect. Because rappers who mention ayat in the in the raps. Yeah, so it's not it's not going to have an effect. It's the ones who implement it, who live by it. I saw Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, is a powerful statement. He said that you know he's he was he was referring to the reciters, the Qurra of his time. And by the way, the Qurra in that time were people who didn't just recite, but they actually had knowledge of the Quran as well. Nowadays, a qari is just a person who's got a nice voice mm. and he knows to read. But them days, it was a person who knew the Quran, was a scholar of the Quran. He said, the Quran today, he said, they will say to you that I recited the Quran and I didn't even drop a single harf. I did not even drop a single letter. Like, I recited it perfectly. And then al Hassan al-Basri said back to them, he said, rather you dropped everything except for the letter. Mm. Meaning all it was re- was recitation. Yeah. So now, it, but imagine how 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 true that is for our time. If that mm. was his time, and he was from the Salaf, the Tabi'een, and them t- times they were scholars of the Quran. Imagine he was to see us today. I mean, I mean, to be honest, at least they recite. We didn't even we don't even recite. <laughs> no, but you know, he said uh, Hassan Basri also said something similar. Go ahead. So he said that the people they thought the Quran was revealed uh, uh, to be acted by. So the Quran was revealed to be acted by. But the people they thought reciting it was acting by it, Ooh, and how how relevant is that today? That. Wow! Mm. So a lot of people, well, and it's so sad. A lot of people say Ahl Quran, people of the Quran, and this and that. What they mean is just someone who can read the Quran. Yeah, he doesn't know to read. He doesn't know. Does, he doesn't a person know doesn't teach to read. Wow! Like right nowadays, yeah, people giving tafsir, just giving tafsir of the linguistic words of the Quran. Wow! That's actually deep. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. You, you ask him a question pertaining to fiqh, and he says, No, no, no. I just, I just do tafsir. I don't know fiqh. Like, what well, are you talking about? You just do tafsir. The Quran comes from. It comes from Quran. <laughs> the Quran talks. Anyway, we're going off topic. That's mad. So, what's the cause of depression? That's the, the question that we yeah, asked in the previous so podcast that we. Yeah. Like yeah. So obviously, so you mentioned that it was you know leaving the remembrance of Allah, leaving the Quran, but I just wanted to ask. So we're rec- wait. Are you saying that it's we have? Extreme. We have it's deeper than that. It's deeper than two extremes. It's deeper I mentioned that. that. No, you mentioned the previous podcast. No, no, no even this one I did. No, it's deeper than that. The, you, it's not. It's not as simple as saying. That the cause for depression is just leaving off the Quran. Is no, so there's one of no, one no, of. No, but the no, I, remember, I remember you said that all causes of depression. Some people go to extreme where they say it's just jinn. I and said I, that in this podcast. Well. In this yeah. podcast, yeah. yeah. I was I listening. Subhanallah. <laughs> what are the causes of some of? Okay. List some more okay. causes so other than the just fa- leaving the, the Quran. Foundation Can I mention one? Huh? Can I mention one? Yeah, of course. Can. So we have the hadith of Abu Umama Al Bahili, right? So we have the hadith of Abu Sa'id Al Khudri, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Abu Umama Al Bahili radiAllahu Anhu sitting in the masjid, and he asked him, "What are you doing in this time, other than the time of salah?" So he said to me, "Ya Rasulullah, humumun, there's sad humum, which is ham, jam of ham, which is anxiety, right? What do you and also debts, debts. Mm. So it, part of the reason for his anxiety, yeah. anxiety is because the debts." Right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him the dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasal min al-hammi wal-ghammu min al-huzni wal-bukhlu min qahri al-rijal min qahri al-rijal min ghalabat al-din wa qahri al-rijal So he mentioned the dua Qalab al-dini Qalab al-dini It's both both Qahri al-dini wa ghalabat al-rijal Both of them are written Nothing in common So the point is um, This reason for a depression wasn't jinn 
So a lot of people they say, are you Muslims or are you people are backwards that you think that all sadness is just from jinn and that and that's not the case necessarily. It comes from other reasons. Mm. But what we do say though is that the cure for everything is not, is the Quran can be the Quran by itself. Yeah. Can be the, obviously we're not we're not denying medicine, but yeah. it can be the Quran yeah. as well. So that's one of the reasons. It's not just jinn. It's also um, things that happen in the tangible. life. Tangible, tangible reasons. No. Also, if you look at, you know, what I find powerful here yeah, is that if you look at the ahadith in which the Prophet <coughs> taught us, um, you know, things to say during uh, depression, sadness, during distress, during karb, during calamities and chaos, um, they all indicate a particular solution, right? Mm. Which kind of also indicates what the problem was. Mm. And all of these adhkar, it's, it's, uh, like I'll give you an example, yeah? <laughs> the hadith uh, Asma bint Unais radiallahu anha when the Prophet said should I teach you some words to say when you are in a state of distress and what are the words look distress this could be your world is coming down over you heartbreak pain sadness d- debt you know ops on the block like whatever it might be some words to say now a person will look at this from the outside who really doesn't understand what the problem and the cause of his or her depression and sadness is will not be able to understand the solution inside of this it's actually quite shocking you know what it was mm. it's just to say Allah's name the prophet says say Allah and then say it again Allah and then say Rabbi no 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 the dhikr is mentioned say it twice Allah Allah then to say Rabbi which is another name of Allah la ushriku bihi shay'a that I will not associate any partners in worship with him if you look at another hadith, the, uh, I think hadith Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, where he said, كان يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الكرب The Prophet used to say when he was in a state of distress, what would he say? Distress, what would he say? لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات والأرض ورب العرش الكريم all of these athkar, you see a similar theme. The Prophet is remind, is saying when you're in a state of distress and pain and sadness and grief, the Prophet is, he's not even, like in these athkar, he's not even asking for it to be uplifted from him. What's he saying? Just remember Allah. Just acknowledge Allah. Even the, the, the dua that Yunus Aysa made when he was inside the belly of the, of, of, of the fish. And the Prophet, what did he say? He said, no one calls out to Allah with this dua except Allah responds. What's the dua though? You're not even asking for anything. It's la ilaha illa ant. Allah, there is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth except for you. Subhanak, you are perfect, free from deficiency. Inni kuntu min al I am the oppressor. I am the, the dhalim. Does that make sense? So, again, what are you asking for? You're just remembering Allah. Does that make sense? You're remembering Allah, but at the same time you're acknowledging something. The defi- there was a deficiency in you. What's the deficiency? You became a bit weak in your relationship with Allah, and that's what allowed you to feel this pain. Does that make sense? Mm. Like Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shay'a. His dua should read when you're going through heartbreak. Someone broke your heart, and what do you say? You say Allah. Why? Who is Allah? Allah is dhul the one who is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. Does that make sense? And from the pillars of ibadah is love, okay? Love and humility. These are two pillars of worship. Does that make sense? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, nasi may yatakhidu min duni Allah andadan yuhibbu namka hubillah." From mankind, there are those who take others as equals when it comes to love, other than Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ But the believers are intense for their love for Allah. Does that make sense? So the point here is that you decrease in your tawheed. Allah is supposed to be the one that you love more than anyone else. You're supposed to love Allah more than the money. You're supposed to love Allah more than the guy, or more than the girl, or more than the family, or more than whatever it is that, that, that is causing you this pain. Does that make sense? So Prophet you remember, remind yourself, Allah, that's the one who you're supposed to love more than anyone else. That's the one who you are supposed to attach your heart to. You were created for him to fulfill his rights. said, I did not make you for any other purpose except that you worship me. Does that make sense? Mm. And then if it didn't affect you the first time, Allah say it again until it has an effect in your heart. And then who is this Allah that you're supposed to love, that you're supposed to worship alone? Rabbi, the one who's your Lord. 
the one who made you, the one who provided for you. Rabbi is the one who created you, provides you, sustains you, controls your affairs, brings you harm, uh, deflects from you harm, or brings you harm and brings you good, or deflects from you good. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the last thing, and this was the problem. I will not do shirk with you, Ya Allah. I will not worship anyone else besides you. Whether the shirk be major, whether it be minor, or whether it be hidden. hidden. I'm not going to come with any association. Does that make sense? And that was the problem. Is that you started to love things, or you started to want from things, you started to hope or rely or desire things a bit more than you were supposed to. And your tawheed and Allah Azza wa Jal dropped a bit. And that's what allowed for the pain to come. So the solution is what? In attaching yourself back to Allah by being a slave, by worshipping Him, primarily through reciting the Quran with your tongue and through your body by implementing it through the ibadat. Just like on that topic of recitation, is there like a practical guide or practical? Because saying recite the Quran is, you know, very open. A lot of people, it's just like, um, yeah, okay, cool, I'll do it. But is there like, can, can we do like a charima by challenge or a charima by like, do this and watch it and watch by the end of it? Or, you know, a, like you feel a lot better. Maybe you won't feel completely free of depression, but you feel a lot better. Mm. Something like, asking maybe like the Quran once in 40 days, right? That's what the Prophet Sallallahu advised um, the companion. That's, the minimum the salaf used to like. The minimum, yes. Yeah, so as in like, so if you just read like, what is it, 15 pages a day? Three um, pages after every salah. And that's it, you complete the Quran in 40 days. You repeat the Quran every day. But the thing is, the most important thing, you're reading the Quran, has, that's the, in terms of ruqya, reading it on you and you, you, yeah. you read it on yourself. That's, that's, that's something. Also reading it every day, that the salaf they used to dislike for a person, to, that it goes past him 40 days without finishing the Quran. I Meaning 40 days go, and he hasn't finished the Quran in terms of reading. But when it comes to specific ayat, when it comes to reading ruqya, what would you yeah, recommend? Have, so it's a fatiha. We have the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Qudri radiallahu anhu in Bukhari Muslim where the man, uh, the, the chief from the tribe, he was stung by a scorpion. And this is a physical illness, right? He was stung by a scorpion, it was a poison. So Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, Qudri read to him, on him, Surah al-Fatiha. That uh, shows that Surah al-Fatiha is a cure as well. How many times? Or seven times. Seven, right? seven times. And you have Ayat al-Kursi. You can read that as well. The last three ayats of Surah al-Baqarah. When it comes to, and also after that, some of the scholars, some of the scholars, they mentioned, and this, the, this, there is difference of opinion on this, is reciting certain ayat that have been known to have a bigger effect on certain illnesses, such as jinn possession. Reading the ayah of, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتُّ الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ For example, Surah Al-Jinn, the last al -jin, page of Surah Al-Aqaf. Yeah, the, yeah, these kind of ayat that are mentioned specifically, but the, out of tajriba, that have been tried, because you find that um, jinn possession is a, it's, it's been considered to be necessary. It's not just Quran that cures it. They also, the ulama, they mention other things that are adwiya, like Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, that mentions medicines that cure jinn possession. And, like, for example, Sheikh Baz mentions white musk. White musk, using white musk. Really? Yeah, using white musk. It depends if you believe ruqya is tawqifi or yeah, if it's. Difference of opinion amongst scholars on it. But the point is that there are certain ayat that are specifically different, uh, that are specifically used. The last thing that Imran, what he mentioned about. Um, when it comes to the la ilaha illa subhanak inni kuntum min al this kind of dua is a benefit from this and that this person when you're saying that dua we have also ayub when he said rabbi in masani yadurru anta arhamur rahimin he didn't ask for anything so what why how is that considered to be a dua it's considered to be just a dhikr right but someone asked Sufyan ibn Uyayna why is why is this a dua that really why is this considered to be a dua when it's just a dhikr and you're not actually asking for anything and he said, did you not hear the poetry of Umayyah ibn Abi Salt? He was one of the Jahili poems, poetry, uh, poets, where he said, أَذْكُرُ حَاجَتِي أَمْ قَدْ كَفَانِي حَيَاؤُكَ إِنَّ شِيمَتَكَ الْحَيَاؤُ إِذَا He said, إِنَّ شِيمَتَكَ الْحَيَاؤُ إِذَا I can't remember exactly what he said. He said, should I, should I mention what I need? Or should I, because a, a, a generous person, a generous person, if you just say to him, um, I got a debt. You haven't asked him anything, have you? But you just mm. told him something. Mm. Or you praised him, you said, you're so generous. Yeah. Right? A generous person knows, understands that you, you need something. SubhanAllah. So what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when you say, La ilaha illa anta subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't tell me that. I can't remember the last one. Uh, I can't remember the last one. I can't remember the last one. It's not just that. You know another powerful thing to look at? It's the that, meanings yeah, is, is that those du'as, those dhikrs, they teach you to acknowledge your shortcoming. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen You're the zalim 
This happened to you because of yourselves. Ma ma asaba ka min hasanatin fa min Allah, wa ma asaba ka min sayyatin fa min nafsik. Any good that came to you in your life was from Allah. Any bad that came was because of yourself. Fadil ibn Anad refused to come home, see his wife being disobedient to him. He used to see his child being disobedient to him, or his riding beast being disobedient to him. He says, because I disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. Does that make sense? So this depression, this sadness, it came due to what? Man a'arada an dhikri. You turned away from Allah's reminder. Okay? Well, I swear by Allah, you know something happened to me? Day before yesterday, I was lying down there. Yeah. I was feet. No, I was in the office here. Yeah, it was last night. Well, it was last. Well, life happened to me last night. I was feeling some discomfort in my chest, man. I was thinking, what? Like, I was thinking, did I do a sin? What did I? What did I do? Like, I feel such like heaviness in my chest right now. Literally, I just opened the Quran. I read just just under a juz. Well, like, I felt happy. Oh, just, that's what it does to you You know what I'm saying It's just you t- uh, we, we turn away from the book We just You know We're all day or every day We're on our phone If you just slide on the iPhone Now it tells you How many hours you spent on it If you imagine You spend 10 hours a day 6 hours a day 7 hours a day And w- all day you're watching sins You're just looking at the dunya It's hardening your heart You remember the world And you remember these sins More than you remember Allah So what expect? What else do you expect? Saad you haven't said anything You're not depressed are you? I mean no 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 Alhamdulillah Okay No 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 Okay, alhamdulillah. The last thing I want to ask before we f- uh, to wrap it up. Just can I? I'm so sorry because you know you asked him about practical solution, yeah. Mm. So um, I'm gonna mention one thing about. Anyway, okay. Yeah, okay. The, the 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 practical solutions, um, I would say are three things. Yeah, I'm not saying these are the only three, but these are three things to do. Yeah. Number one, the issue is tawheed. That's that's the issue here. You have a deficiency in a person's tawheed. Um, so the greater your tawheed, the greater your sense of happiness, the greater your sense of joy, the greater your quality of life. Does that make sense? Number two, it's the Quran, reciting it and implementing it. And number three, it's these actual du'as that we've just mentioned, to read them, which will all be in the information section below. So as for the first one, I really would urge the brothers and sisters to watch a series that I'm doing. It's called the, On the Nine Ten Names of Allah. I promise you, wallahi, when you get to know who Allah is, takes all sadness and pain away from you and literally we'll just link the playlist below as well just go through it we've, we've gone through six episodes now just go through the nine times of Allah Azza wa Jal. follow it with me weekly so do that number two read the Quran and implement it number three read these adkar below and if they want to add on anything you mention that? yeah I just wanted to mention one thing uh, very quickly which is because I know a lot of people they might say okay khalas, I understand the cure for this problem and uh, I'm gonna do it. Some of them said, you know, I've been doing it. I've been reading Quran. I've been doing my adhkar. I've been praying my salawat. I've been going to the masajid. But it just doesn't seem to go. Like I, I've been doing it. And some of them might have just recently started to do everything together, or they might have been doing it for a while. So I just wanted to mention a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, just to give some perspective in regards to this issue of duration. Like, is it is it a case that a cure will come after once or twice, or does it have to be for a month, or how does it work? And the hadith mentioned in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, and I believe it's in Sahih Muslim as well, and it's narrated by Abu Sa'id al Khudri, where basically a man, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, saying that, you know, my brother, he's got some pain in his stomach. You know, he has a pain in his stomach, and every, he's tried to, you know, you know, cure it, but nothing's working. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised him, he said, Isqihya asala, give him honey. Tell him to go have honey. And the reason for that is because, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that in the honey there was a shifa, sure. there's a cure. So the man he went, he gave the honey to his brother, he came back uh, the next time to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I gave him the honey, but the pain just increased. It's not even it's not it's not even the case that has gone down, it's just increasing. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again told him, you know, go and give your brother honey. And he said this three more times. And on the fourth time when he came and back every to the, time it was getting worse. And every time it was getting worse. And then the last time he, on the fourth time he came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said the same thing to Ya Rasulullah, gave him the honey, nothing's helping, his the pain is just increasing. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he said Sadaq Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke the truth, but the stomach of your brother lied. The stomach of your brother lied. And then he went and the, the Prophet said again, give him honey. And then when the man he went this time and his brother was cured after taking the honey. I, I don't believe I don't remember who it was I'm not sure if you remember who I, took the fa'idah Ibn Qayyim it was Ibn Qayyim that mentioned the fa'idah which is the same way here the man was told to take the honey right um, 
it wasn't the case that the honey would cure him the first time, right? Or the second time. It could have, right? But we don't know the particular amount that's given, right? In order for the cure to come. It might be once, twice, three times, four times. You don't know. The point is, you keep taking the cure, right? Up until the point when you find that okay. it's gone now, okay? But in the case with dhikr and ibadah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is something which doesn't come to an end, okay? So a lot of people, they might think, okay, when is the cure going to come? Okay, just wait for it. It will come. The more consistent you are in your salah, the more consistent you are in your dhikr, eventually you will find that the pain will eventually go. Second so analogy that Sa'ad Abdul gives, which I think is very appropriate here, that you know, if you, have a, if you have a hole and you're trying to fill it up with water, but the hole in it, it has many cracks, and the hole, it just has crevices that go even deeper. When you pour the water in this hole, is the water gonna, is the is the hole gonna fill up with water? No. What's immediately gonna happen? It's gonna the water's gonna go into the cracks, and it's gonna leak. fill up the cracks first. Once it fills up the cracks, then you'll see the water rise inside of the hole and fill it up. Mm. Some of our hearts are like that. We came to Allah with hearts that were cracked because of the sins that we've done. Does that make sense? Yeah. So these hearts are broken. So the ibadat and the adhkar and the du'as and all of this that we're doing, it's fixing the crack. So you're not feeling necessarily its effects right now, but don't think even for a second it's not working. Wallahi, it is. It's just that the cracks are so deep, it just needs to fix them first. And then eventually you'll feel it in the heart. That's why when you read the Quran and a person who's possessed or he's got magic, it's having an effect, inshallah ta'ala. You just can't see it because, you know, maybe the illness is a bit deeper than you thought. That doesn't mean that the, the, the treatment is wrong. It just means that the person's really sick, perhaps. So it's just going to take a bit longer than usual. So as the Prophet said in the hadith, Sadaq Allah, Allah, he spoke the truth. Allah didn't lie. This is a cure. Keep doing it. Okay, the very last thing I just want to quickly ask uh, Osaid Yassin is a notion that's you know commonly pushed these days is did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever get depressed? People say, you know, Surah al duha mm. it was revealed because mm. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was depressed. Is this mm. the correct term to use? Is there any reality behind this? I don't this? know, depressed, depressed. No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hazina, he felt sad. He felt yes, sad? He felt sad. Hazina, yes. But like not you know, depressed. It depends what you mean by depression, isn't it? Depression is mm, a medical term which has to be defined medically, right? So the thing is that extreme well, sadness to the point where it, it affects sad. your day-to-day abilities where you can't even... No, you can't sad. <coughs> you feel sad. You can say that. You, you feel sad. But, but to use the word depression, it, it's not really befitting. Allah I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Just, just to mention, I'm so sorry, yeah, because you mentioned this and we might see it in the comments. Some people, they bring a narration narrated by Al-Bukhari Mu'allaqan where the Prophet Sallam apparently Allah wanted Allah. to you know, commit suicide or something like that because of his sadness. This is incorrect because the hadith, uh, sorry to just get a little bit technical, Al-Bukhari, when he narrates with a chain, he's trying to say this is a hadith that I'm bringing is authentic. When he narrates something without a chain, he's not trying to say this is authentic. He's not trying to say this is an authentic narration because he never brought a chain for it in the first place. Mu'allaqan is not necessarily sahih. It's basically so. It's it's he's not. It's not saying it's, it's not necessarily so. Yeah, it can be. Can yeah, it can. But this this narration was not authentic. Hey, no. the well, Alhamdulillah. The Prophet did not want to commit suicide or anything like that. Of course not. Um. So and then, inshallah, I'm gonna take over Walker's position because he's got up and I don't know why he just left me like this. Um. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa